Hi everybody, it's your digital technology librarian Christy here with you yet again on another lovely Friday. Um, I'm here to, of course, give out a handful of really awesome film recs, and this week we are going to focus in on what's probably my favorite genre of movies, scary films. Um, accordingly, these are not going to be recommendations for little ones at all. These are all recommendations for grown-ups. Uh, so hopefully you'll find something within them that uh, will be fun to watch this weekend. Um, I've been a fan of the genre for as long as I can remember. Um, and I've tried to pick titles that maybe you either haven't heard of or maybe uh, haven't seen in a really, really long time. And hopefully these will be a lot of fun for you. I actually found so many more than just the handful that I'm recommending today. So there may be a part two or part three. Uh, in any case, so many awesome scary films out there. So please do uh, give a listen. Uh, as every week, these recommendations all come from our three video services, Clevenet's Overdrive, Hoopla Digital, and Canopy. So with your Mylan Berlin library card, you'll be able to access any of those services entirely for free. So without any further ado, here are your recs for this week's Film Rec Friday. Our first set of recommendations, as usual, all come from Clevenet's Overdrive. Uh, the first one is a movie called The Host. Now, The Host is a Korean film, so that does mean there will be English subtitles with it. Um, if you're not a subtitle fan, I still strongly recommend you give this one a try. It's such a great story. I think it's really very easily accessible. And with this genre especially, I think subtitles just sort of work very well. Um, I know that there are some genres where it's a lot harder to get into, but there's always so much going on on screen that I think they just meld together so, so very strongly. Um, now, if you've been following film awards at all, uh, you probably are already at least vaguely familiar with uh, the name Bong Joon-ho. Now, Bong Joon-ho is the director that won, I believe, three Academy Awards just this past season, all for his film Parasite, including Best Picture. Now, he's a phenomenal director, and he's been around for years and years. The Host is one of his earlier pieces. I actually think it's the first movie of his that I ever saw. And, you know, even though it comes from this much younger version of himself, you can still very much feel a lot of his trademarks within it. So on its surface level, it's just a fantastic monster movie. I've seen people liken it to things like Jaws and these other big creature features. Um, totally true. I would say that those are very apt comparisons. But underneath that, sup that superficial layer, there's so much going on. He's really good at satirizing uh, governments and regimes and ruling classes and he does that within this movie so well uh, because it never feels like you're being preached at at all which I find really annoying personally uh, especially in horror films because that's not really why I'm watching horror movies for the most part uh, so you know it flows really well but you do get this feeling of watching something a little bit more at the same time and the story is so good. So you've got this satirical viewpoint going on underneath that monster movie layer and then you've just got an exceptionally good script with some really good visuals when you think about the time period especially um, and some phenomenal acting because one of those great things about I think the Korean horror genre in general is that they 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 aren't pulling from this B, C, D actor pool. You know, they're getting really, really solid mainstream actors and they're carrying the emotional weight of like the heavier scenes. So you get a well-acted, well-produced, well-done movie that also happens to scare you every few moments. Um, so the host follows this multi-generational family that happens to be part of the lower classes uh, as they struggle to get back the youngest member of their family, of their troop, uh, who has been nabbed by this monster. This monster that's suddenly gone on this sort of 
killing spree. Um, and you come to find out, it seems like this monster has potentially been made by some government, either their own or someone else's. Now, again, you've got that satirical viewpoint going on uh, all throughout the film, but you're also fighting against this monster and traveling with this family that's desperate to get this girl back because she is the baby of the family. She's a young woman and, you know, she's not just some wet blanket, she's helping other people try and survive while she's in captivity. And it, it's, it's just this exciting, suspenseful, infuriating, like, heartbreaking movie. And everything piles on top of each other. And the story goes so quickly. Um, you know, every death has meaning. It's not just to add to the body count. It's not just to have another gory scene on screen. Um, it's all in service of this story to have a, a real emotional connection with the audience. And it works so well. So again, whether or not you're a fan of subtitles, I definitely recommend this one for you. I think you'll like it. It's a really, really good movie just in general, but especially as a creature feature. So please do check out uh, Bong Joon-ho's The Host, available on Clevenet Overdrive. Now, the second Overdrive movie I have to recommend uh, is Night of the Living Dead, George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. Um, you know, today we have shows like The Walking Dead that were at least hugely popular for a short amount of time. Uh, you got the horror comedy movies, Zombieland, and then it's long, long awaited sequel, Zombieland 2, out at the movie theaters. I mean, zombie films are everywhere. Uh, in mainstream, in, in cult, uh, cult favorite titles, you know, it doesn't, it's not like small films or big films. They're just all over the place. And some of them are super high budget and some of them are super low budget. But before all of those, came 1968's Night of the Living Dead. Really, zombies weren't a thing at that point. Um, but what Romero did was essentially create a genre within horror of these creepy, undead, cannibalistic things. <laughs> and I would imagine if at the time you were watching this movie, you were probably wondering what on earth was going on, simply because this was not something you saw very often. Now, you know, the movie starts out for the first five minutes, pretty tame. You know, you've got these two adult siblings who are going to visit uh, their father's grave site when all of a sudden that's Barbara and Johnny and all of a sudden Johnny is attacked by this really weirdly behaving man who injures and ends up killing Johnny. Now, Today, we can easily identify this weirdly behaving man as a zombie. But I would imagine at the time, again, you definitely would be at the movie theater going, what is going on? Is he possessed? Is he like crazy? What's, what is this dude's deal? And, you know, it just goes absolutely insane from there. She ends up pulled up in this um, farmhouse with a bunch of other people and like every, for the most part, zombie story since, it is as much about surviving the other human beings as it is surviving these undead creatures outside. You know, I think considering how old this film is and how it started this whole series of movies and its own franchise afterward, its storylines and, and messaging seem really contemporary, really fresh, you know? Um, the things that you will see and talk about and feel when you're watching it are things you would feel from a movie in the 2010s, you know? Or, I guess, the 2020s. <laughs> uh, anyway, Barbara ends up meeting up with all of these other humans, and they have to survive this night of 
zombies and one another and what will happen who will survive um it's i think a really important film within the genre and i strongly recommend people check it out if you've never seen it or maybe if you haven't seen it in a really long time it is really interesting to watch just in general when you think about all of this context that it, that, that that there is with it uh, but it's also just, again, a really well done, scary movie. Um, I watched it for the first time in, in years last year. And I remember thinking, I don't recall any of these things the first time I saw it. But it's really interesting to think about, you know, everything that's still super relevant. So George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. Give it a watch. It is really awesome. And I love, I love this movie. Our second set of recommendations all come from Hoopla Digital, and the first film is a movie called Oculus. Um, now you've all probably seen uh, other movies or heard stories that at least some at some point feature a magic mirror, right? You know, like everybody thought that the magic mirror in Snow White was all powerful, or the mirror of Erised in the Harry Potter stories. Uh, had all of these gifts and abilities, but those mirrors had nothing on the mirror in Oculus. Um, this movie leans very heavily into atmosphere and mood. Um, it has this truly creepy, creepy vibe that it leans into so much more than, you know, the standard blood, guts, and gore. So if you like that almost overwhelming feeling of dread, rather than your, say, standard slasher movie, this one is definitely one to check out. Um, there's this perpetually eerie mood going on, and it's very, very effective at um, keeping you at the on the edge of your seat. So the story itself features these two children who um, end up encountering this mirror with their family, and the parents end up being killed. The young boy is blamed for it. He's sent to prison. He's sent, he, he, and he spends his childhood and youth being told, you know, all of this is in your head. You are the guilty party. So he grows up into an adult who believes there's no supernatural element. It was me. I did it. This is my fault. Then on the flip side, you have the sister who was not charged, um, who feels it's her duty to get her younger brother exonerated because she knows this whole situation was supernatural. Her brother didn't kill her parents. And so she spends her life trying to, to do that, to exonerate him. Um, and then as adults, they meet again and they're in this situation where they are faced with this mirror again and their viewpoints, you know, mirror one another. Uh, and it's so unsettling because while you have the characters dealing with this sense of reality or unreality, you as the audience are pulled right along with it because you can't tell because you're going from these two different um, story storylines, characters who feel so very differently about the situation. And the movie plays with that. What's really going on? Who is really doing what? what is actually being responsible? Is it all in somebody's head? Is it not? Um, and that sort of off kilter feeling and vibe permeates the entire movie, um, until you get to a really, I won't say satisfying, but, uh, climactic moment in the movie. And it's definitely one that I, I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but I'm really glad I watched it. So, Please do if you like, again, that sense of dread and that sort of perpetual edge of your seat feeling, check out Oculus on Hoopla. You won't regret it. The second movie on Hoopla that I want to recommend, recommend is yet another Korean film. I know I do recommend a lot of foreign films and I just have to say Korean film industry is so good at this genre. Uh, it is called The Wailing. Um, this is one of my favorite horror movies from the last few years. It was just awesome. Um, it is truly distressing, uh, creepy, altogether fantastic, suspenseful horror film. 
Um, and it's all about evils from beyond and within. It does not have a lot of jump scares at all. I'm not a jump scare person. Uh, I am generally one of those people who likes more of that atmospheric dread. Uh, and this will still, without the jump scares, leave chills running up and down your spine the entire movie. Um, so storyline is basically a series of brutal murders are committed in this really small remote village and you know everyone knows everyone else and the villagers and police forces everyone quickly becomes suspicious of this outsider who's just moved to town you know it's a classic concept you know you've got the potential dangers of an outsider an unknown factor versus, well, evils that we would potentially already know. So if it's not this outsider, who is it? You know, and sometimes that concept of we must know the person who's done these awful things is way more frightening in reality. So of course they latch onto this outsider. Uh, and this movie absolutely plays with that idea. You know, um, it plays with the idea in the sense that you do end up second guessing yourself all the time because it's got that suspense mystery element to it in addition to all of these scary moments you do keep guessing and second guessing and triple guessing yourself am i supposed to be believing this am i supposed to be believing that and the central character who is a police officer um trying to figure things out himself because you're following his journey um, you absolutely feel in every single moment. Um, the writing is wonderful. The acting is really superb. Like, like I said, they, they pick from some phenomenal actors. Um, and the mood, the mood throughout the entire movie is so tense. Like I rewatched it for the first time this weekend in a long while. And I found my Finch fit. Uh, my fists clenching a lot while I was watching. And this is a movie that I'd already seen once before. Uh, so I knew what was happening, was going to happen. And I still, I still had that, I still got caught up in that tense emotional roller coaster. And the movie really is an emotional roller coaster uh, filled with some really honest um, twists and turns that I know the first time I watched, I didn't see necessarily coming at all. Um, I, I don't think I leaned back in my chair once the first time. And even that second time, I, I it wasn't a comfortable watch at all. So I 100% recommend people check out The Wailing. It's a phenomenal film, uh, regardless of genre. And it's, it's just something I feel like every, um, especially suspense or horror fan should watch. My last hoopla recommendation is for the movie Scream. Now, while horror films like Halloween were really popular in the 80s and ended up launching like dozens of sequels, by the mid 90s, you just weren't seeing that kind of interest anymore, at least um, not in mainstream audiences. You know, you had a lot of direct to video sequel titles. Um, movies that starred like CD tier acting, um, storylines were just really sort of canned and, you know, they might pull those popular characters of like Freddy or Jason or Michael Myers, but really the stories were just rehashed versions of versions of earlier and earlier tales that they'd already told. Uh, so again, uh, mainstream audiences just were not really super interested. And then came Scream in, I think, 1996. And things turned around dramatically. I don't know if it was the blend of genres. Um, you know, the, the teen slasher films were generally straightforward blood, guts, and gore kind of movies. But Scream really pulled in a lot of, you know, humor. It played with that sort of meta concept of like these kids are very much aware of horror movies um 
it played in with mystery whodunit style capers you know and and maybe that amalgamation of different things is what really resonated with audiences but scream really really did change things for a while you were then seeing movies like i know what you did last summer with these bright young things who were headliners of their time and they they would sign on to these movies uh and that i think really was affected by the movie scream and you know it's it's honestly still a really fun film to go back and watch you know, it relaunched Drew Barrymore as a grown-up actress rather than just this child actress that we all knew. Um, and I do wonder if she'd still be doing movies now if she hadn't done this film because she'd been so stuck in child actor roles and that sort of uh, positioning within the industry. Um, so the storyline is pretty standard seeming at first. You know, a serial killer starts targeting high school kids. That's, that's the genre. But then again, like I said, you pull in these other elements of uh, dark humor and, you know, whodunit because within this one, it's actually, you know, not just some crazy psycho, but some crazy psycho who definitely had a reason for targeting these kids. And that's, the way it goes through the entire franchise of Scream movies. Um, there are twists and turns galore and, you know, they're done quite well. It's, it's this tongue-in-cheek movie that's actually altogether a well-done horror film and mystery put together. So if you're looking for something a little fun, you either have never seen Scream before or you haven't seen it in a long time, definitely check it out this weekend. It's a fun one. Um, and it's definitely worth another watch. My last two recommendations both of course come from our canopy service. And the first one of those is called Green Room. Now, to be honest, the main reason that I decided to watch Green Ro Room initially is because one of its stars is Patrick Stewart. And who does not want to watch Captain Picard? Uh, be in a horror movie, right? Um, I'm a huge fan of his. He's always a fantastic actor. And so I didn't really need a better reason to watch this one. Uh, so what did I get when I watched Green Room? I got a surprisingly tautly written, fast paced thriller slash slasher film that was helmed by the late uh, always wonderful Anton Yelchin. Uh, I didn't even honestly realize he was the star until I started watching. Um, phenomenal young actor uh, and a cast that includes, you know, Imogene Poots and, and several other really solid performers. And of course, uh, Sir Patrick Stewart, who is phenomenal, surprisingly phenomenal, or not surprisingly, I suppose he is Patrick Stewart, at playing this violent, angry, uh, white supremacist. And he plays it so well. Um, the story follows this young punk rock band that gets booked into this super sketchy, uh, isolated uh, bar and they see something they absolutely should not have seen and that sets off this series of horrible events where they're essentially held against their will and what follows is an hour and a half of crazy blood guts and gore and really fantastic acting. Um, it's a really fun movie to watch. Like it was super fast paced. Like I didn't realize an hour and a half had gone by. Uh, if you're looking something, looking for a scary movie that is more actiony, uh, along with its blood, guts and gore a uh, aspect, definitely check out Green Room on Canopy. Uh, I really am glad that I did watch it. So please check it out. And my very last film to recommend is The Witch. Now, <laughs> To be perfectly honest, this one scared me more than pretty much any horror movie that I've seen in a very long time. And 
I don't know if it's the mood. I even now as I analyze what I saw and why I was scared, I it's not like it has traditional super scary elements. But man, this one and movies like Poltergeist, they just this just stuck with me. It's still with me. Um, it's in I was scared enough after watching it the first time that I did not rewatch it prior to this film rec list. Um, I was like, nope, I'm set. I know how much I liked this movie and how much it terrified me. Um, it's really well done. I mean, it's filmed. It's a beautiful horror film. If you can wrap your mind around that. Uh, the best way to describe it would be unsettling. I think I felt and feel now unsettled by this movie from beginning to end. Uh, it's one of those that just, like I said, it it makes you feel uncomfortable. Uh, it follows a family of exiled Puritans. And, you know, I, I find that sort of period of time really fascinating in general, the sort of mass psychosis that seemed to go around, you know, the, the witch, the witch trials and everything like that. And, you know, I think that knowledge also sort of plays with the movie and it, the movie wants you to have that feeling all right, that tense feeling. Um, so this exiled family is totally isolated. It is left to live alone near what is possibly the creepiest looking woods <laughs> on film and very bad things happen from the beginning of the movie. Um, bad things that, you know, go along with that sense of puritanical witch trial -y era happenings. Um, and again, considering what we know about, say, Salem and those witch trials, your mind is perpetually going, is this real or is this all in somebody's head? Like that, that sort of perpetual feeling of being off kilter that stays with you this whole movie. Um, and that feeling of unreality just grows with every instance, like, and as time goes by, you definitely get more and more caught up in this sort of vortex of, of impending doom. Uh, and, and I, I really do like that about this movie. It's again, not necessarily a blood, guts and gore kind of movie, but it's unsettling. <laughs> and that mood is so effective. So, so effective. I think more effective in this film than in so many others that I've watched that have tried to do that. Uh, and again, I, I, I was so terrified by this movie that I just would not watch it again. Not because it's a bad movie, but because it really is effective and excellent. So if you like those sorts of tense, uh, uncomfortable films, The Witch is definitely one to check out. Um, like I said, I love horror films. Uh, they, it's a genre that I think has something for everybody, whether you like more of an action-y thing, like say the green room, or if you like something that's a little bit funnier and more playful, but still got your traditional slasher elements, then you've got things like Scream. I mean, like you don't have to just be into terribly scary things. There's, there's something that will speak to anyone. Um, if you have your own favorite horror movies, please recommend them to the rest of us. You know, you never know when something is going to be a title that nobody's heard of and that will really speak to others. So please again, recommend them in the comments below. Uh, as always, Again, all of these titles are available through our three services, so please, please check them out. Um, and with that, I hope everybody has a fantastic weekend and that some of these films might be a fun watch for you. We'll see you next week, okay? Bye.